Mm-hmm. So you're creating a, a use case diagram today, Steve. So that's the the, the project browsers, isn't it? That's sort of where all the, the entire yeah. That's, for, for, yeah. Can I call you Tom? Is that what I call you, or will you have some? Uh, you Tom? Can call me Tom. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's right, Tom. This is a the key way that a user navigates the content in the enterprise architecture repository. It's a little bit like your Windows Explorer or your, uh, uh, your yeah, a little bit like your Windows Explorer. Yeah, cool. So everything just sort of lives in there, does it? Yeah, that's right. You can find any content, whether it's diagrams or um, elements or features. They're all contained uh, in the project browser, and you can navigate to those and open and close. Uh, tree notes as you would in your favorite um, file explorer. Yeah, cool. So you're saying you need to find a home for this use case. So we're, we're designing a, a use case model today. What, what, what's it going to be, um, what, what was the topic of the use case? What, what's the purpose for this one? So the purpose of the use case is to provide a overview of the value that a particular system provides to its users. Um, and we have to, what's important here is we have to define um, the level that we're doing the um, the use case model at. Is it for the entire system? Is it for a subsystem or is it for a, a, a class or a part of that system? Yeah, cool. Okay. Oh, yeah, so you just dragged and dropped that. That's cool. Gave it a name. Excellent. That's pretty easy. Just created a connector between the two, just dragged and dropped. Yeah, that's right. I can use the quick linker as, as well. Oh, I need to get oh, oops. Once you've done your, your boundary. Quick linker sounds interesting. using the quick linker in this instance uh, to do this uh, reasonably quickly. Yeah, yep. Yeah. That looks like it was focused on on uh, types of connectors that you'd use for use cases. So like, EA's got a lot of technologies in it, yeah, but that one only just showed the use case stuff. That's right, yeah. It, it limits the, uh, depending upon the, um, the starting element, it limits the types of connectors that you can use in a particular situation. Makes it much easier uh, to model. So what's this use case going to be about, this, this diagram? So this is uh, this is about a parking uh, meter system, the kind of, uh, when you park your car outside a, a venue, like a restaurant, um, you approach the parking meter and you want some value out of it. And the value that you're really wanting out of this uh, thing is to ensure that you don't get a, a uh, nasty fine for parking your car in a, in, in, a, um, uh, in, in a parking space. So this is describing all of the, all of the actors who are involved in this and so you see we've got a motorist who's going to pay for parking also check the remaining time there'll be a number of other use cases and we've also got a, um, a maintenance staff um, we we do have another actor involved which is um, the payment system because uh, as you see when a motorist pays for their parking uh, it's going to have some online interaction with another system and in enterprise architect we have the facility to change this actor into being a system actor. So using the uh, advanced menu here, we can, you know, what's happened to that? What, no appearance, sorry. So as you see, this is why I need users to practice this. Um, we can use this rectangular notation for any system actors. And this, uh, this actor is going to get value from the process payment uh, use case. Okay, so turning turn into a square there, we can sort of tell the difference between like a, a person actor, I guess, and a, a system actor. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. So we don't want to we don't want to get uh, our audience confused about which um, who is interacting with this, and we can have um, 
primary and secondary human actors, and we can also have one or more um, system actors. And so this clearly shows that um, the people on the or the, the um, actors on the left are humans, and the one on the right is a uh, is a system. Yeah, right. Oh, that's cool. Anything else you'd like to know, Tom? Uh, not at the moment. It's um, looking quite pretty at this stage. Um, just going to move these. Uh, good practice of this. These around. I'm going to put one more use case on there, which is um, a get parking information. Well, I heard a lot of people who, who use use cases also like to combine them with their user stories. Is there any sort of way that you can have like text associated with each of these um, circles? Yeah, uh, very good. Uh, very good question that uh, there is with every element in Enterprise Architect uh, and features as well, like attributes and other properties and tag values, you can put text uh, into um, against each one of either the use case, the boundary, uh, or um, uh, the uh, get some text. Sorry, paper puppy. Uh, so um, I can uh, put text in in here. And the the thing that people get a little bit confused with with use cases is a lot of people shy away from them because they think that they have to write out very elaborate um, step by step description of everything that that uh, happens between the system and the actor. It's like a table tennis game, if you like, between an actor and uh, a system or a part of a system. But it is uh, completely sensible and reasonable just to put in some text that describes the. Um, the use case or the actor, and like you said, this is getting a little bit closer to what a um, a user story is, and so you can keep them at any level of formality. Enterprise Architect has a great deal of functionality where you can describe in detail these things in the scenario editor, but in this case, yes, we can just put in some simple text. And head of a soap and diagram. So you'll notice you can uh, up here. You notice that there's a little asterisk to the left of the name in the uh, diagram tab uh, i can uh, right mouse click on that bringing up the context menu and i can save all the diagrams or just save uh, this diagram so lots of other things there that i can do i can switch views and, and things uh, i can also hit the use the control s uh, key uh, keystrokes on my keyboard to save and that's a a, uh, a quick quick way to do it as well hmm. Do you like to change the colours, Tom? I'd like to add a heading. A heading to the yeah. entire diagram. Yeah. yeah. So, so um, Enterprise Active has a lot of extra diagram features, and um, one of these is the uh, common elements here. And we can put uh, text up on here, and I can call it. Um, let's call it um, the use case. Um, um, and uh, with that, then I might want to put that into um, the um, alignment. I want to align text in the centre there, and I also might want to go into uh, to change the colour. And let's choose a different colour, and also the font. I can choose the font, and let's make it into uh, 16 and bold, and we'll leave it as um, Calibri there. And you can see then now that I've got that there. And a, a useful thing to do at this point is also in the um, uh, in the behaviour is to uh, make this non-selectable so that I can't uh, uh, select that. So that's quite useful. It's useful also with the boundary um, to make the um, the boundary uh, not selectable. And then I'm able to go and uh, you know move these use cases around and use some of the alignment tools. Uh, for example, spacing these evenly, aligning them, uh, aligning them to the left, and things, and just generally tidying up um, the diagram. So again, I can align these ones. Uh, through their centres as well. No, oh, very nice, very nice. Um, you spoke about colours. Can, mm. can we change the colours? Yes, we can. We can change the colours of uh, any of the elements. I'm going to change uh, all of these ones on the left for the human actors. I'm going to change their fill colour uh, into uh, this blue, and I could also change their their border colour if I wanted to as well. And 
uh, do that and I might make all the human actors I'll just align these uh, guys and I'll uh, let's change them into a um, color there and um, maybe their fill color as well and let's change this uh, payment system over here into um, a different color as well and maybe this guy over here um, into that color as well and you can see that adds a lot of um, visual appeal uh, to the diagram and also to you know some semantics but uh, Tom you, you need to be careful with uh, color because it's not formally defined as part of any of the um, standards typically uh, oh. and so it's um, it's a user defined thing very useful to use but just remember that um, it doesn't have any semantics about it unless we put use legends or or some devices to describe uh, what the colors are meaning in the diagram right okay so different colors might have different meanings for different people so just be careful yep that's right and if uh, if it's important for you to um, describe what the semantics are then you can use the uh, legend feature in enterprise architecture put a legend on the diagram to um, you know to highlight what the colors mean right can we have a look at that sure we can so um, again under here in these uh, column elements uh, common elements I've got this um, diagram legend here and it's really uh, got um, a couple of modes so I'm just going to uh, bring up the uh, properties window uh, so we can see that and um, there's a couple of uh, different ways we can use the legend we can use it just in a manual uh, sense just to go you know we'll put um, a color on there and and, and describe um, what it is so um, I might put into this legend here um, I'll just drag this across a little bit make a little bit more space for myself there and um, I might put in um, a uh, value here of um, human actor and uh, let's choose a fill color there I think we chose that one there and a, uh, a line color which was that one and I'm going to uh, again use that same thing which is just display, actually save that light on the diagram and you can see there that um, that that comes up and do the same thing with the payment system but uh, we don't really have time to talk about this in detail in this in this um, video but uh, Enterprise Architect, Architect can dynamically change the colors on the diagram based on um, based on metadata. For example, you know, we had if we had something uh, such as the element status, uh, the stereotype, or um, the phase it was in, uh, Enterprise Architect can dynamically change um, the fill colors and um, the line colors uh, and the borders um, to um, when you change those properties, the diagram colors or the diagram elements will change which is a very powerful feature right well i guess we'll look at that in another call and that's indeed hmm. well thanks uh Stephen. that's uh looks very very easy to, to to create use case diagrams there um hmm. it's kind of quite nice actually yeah. yeah well just a parting comment tom it, this this diagram looks reasonably simplistic but it's an incredibly powerful diagram to get across the the main value that the system is providing for both its human users and also the system users and it conveys a, a, a great deal of information and always remember Tom that this can be taken down to uh, a lot of other levels for example uh, as we talked about we can take it use the scenario editor to uh, talk about the steps that are involved in each one of these what the system does what the user does and of course as always we can create um, documentation um, if you have for contractual reasons, you need to include this in formal documentation. Uh, we can trace it to other elements. Uh, and of course, there are uh, a, a huge number of other features in Enterprise Architect that we could um, we could use with these models. But uh, thanks, Tom, for, for the questions. I appreciate it. Okay, Stephen. All right, until next time. Thank you.